Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's Career Chat. I'm Krista Harmon with the Kent ISD's Workforce Development Team, and I am so glad to welcome Bill Freiling today. He's an electrician, and we're going to hear about his career path and a little more about the skilled trades. Welcome, Bill. Yeah, thank you. So, Bill, we love to start off with a question here in Career Chats about what you were thinking when you were a high school student. You know, 15 or 16, did you think you'd grow up to be an electrician? Tell us about that thinking. So, I'm probably going to be the exception, and yes, um, I, I knew pretty early on what I wanted to do. So my grandpa owned an electrical company, and my dad worked for him and then started his own electrical company. So I, as a young boy and uh, you know a young adult, ended up helping my dad quite a bit. Um, he primarily does residential work. And so, yeah, going into people's houses, whether it's people from church or wherever, is kind of how he grew his business. Um, and I, I helped him a lot there. Um, so I, I knew that I enjoyed it. Um, I knew the dangers of it early on and got to see that firsthand. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm a gearhead. Um, I love rent, working on cars, but I knew I didn't want to do that for a living. So this was another great way to work with my hands and all that good stuff. That's great. So you have that familial um, kind of heritage of being in the electrical field. How did you know as a young person that maybe carpentry wasn't a good fit for you or even HVAC? Was it just you kind of knew what your grandpa and dad had done and just you already knew it was a good fit? I would say if I was going to do anything else besides being an electrician, it would have been more in the automotive realm, um, you know, whether it was auto body or mechanic. And I had friends that were mechanics and I talked to older people I knew that were mechanics and just the way that the business was it just seemed odd, like working at a dealership was a structured interesting if you're a mechanic. There's a certain amount of time that you can spend working on stuff, and that kind of turned me off to that. I wanted to do it for a hobby, not for a job, um, so this was the other thing that was available to me. I think you bring up such a good point because I meet young people who aren't sure which trade that they might want to go into, and I love that you're able to differentiate that structure of a, a shop, an auto versus that coming and going out of people's homes. There was just more freedom in it for you. And those are the things I want to encourage young people. There's nuances to each of these trades that will help you figure it out. And so for you, you want to keep your auto as a hobby, but focus in on that, helping people in a really tangible way. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you give us just a, a good explanation of what electrician is um, and maybe what your typical day is even like? So... It can be many different things. Um, like I said, my dad owns his own company. He's interacting with homeowners quite a bit. Um, and his he's more of a service guy, but just you know, fixing lighting circuit issues and stuff like that in people's homes. Um, I, I've gotten along with my dad always, but I knew I didn't want to work for him. Um, so I went to a company that he recommended um, and got in with them and did my apprenticeship through them. And we do commercial and industrial work. So, and, and I was on the commercial side. We do have a service side, we have a low voltage side and all that, but I was always in the commercial electrical side. So my typical day was, you know, I was on a project, you know, whether it be a, a Meyer store. Um, I, I got into the medical world early on, worked at Helen DeVos Children's Hospital, Van Andel Institute, those projects, and those projects are long-term, you know, we're there a couple of years. So, so going to that job site every day, um, we, we set up a little temporary trailer there and, and get going. Um, and yeah, so it was, we start early, um, generally starting on site at 6 a.m. Um, and then, yeah, you get your break, your lunch, your afternoon break, and then we were out of there by 3.30. Um, and that's one thing that I liked about it as well is it gave me a lot of freedom at night to do, you end up doing a lot of side work um, because you get a lot of people that ask for it. But yeah, that, that's one thing I liked about that kind of construction work structure was starting early and getting out early. So That's great. And I look forward to digging um, more into some of the skill sets um, about that. So when you were in high school and you knew that this is something your dad did and grandpa did, um, how did you know what type of education? Tell us about some of those early decisions while you were in high school and then mm. training after high school. So I knew about KCTC um, and the tech center there. Um, my dad had gone to that program, so I had actually entertained aviation mechanic for a little bit, um, but then decided, I, I think I applied to both of them and got into the electrical program, um, and so that was my junior and senior year. I did the early classes there that started at seven in the morning, um, and then would go to school after that to our high school, 
and then would go to, we were doing Metro Hospital um, at that point. So then I would go to work in the afternoons and I did that my junior and senior year. Um, so I did about three hours of skill center, three hours of school and three hours of work. Um, so. so in today's world, um, that used to be called like a co-op or an mm -hmm. internship, now they call it work-based learning. So what you're saying is while you were here at the tech center, you were learning the skills in class, but you actually got to be in the actual work setting as a high school student. And again, yeah. testing it out to see if this feels good. Is this where I want to work? Yes. And getting to know the people. That's a big piece of it. Um, yeah. And we, our company has employees that do that now. Um, we have five, five employees that are doing a school to work program or co-op, like, like you said. Yep. That's so great. Great, great opportunity. It gave me a head start. Um, the hours count towards your apprenticeship. And you still have to go through your four years of school, so it doesn't speed you up quite as much as it used to, um, but it still introduces you to the people, the means and methods. Um, and yeah, you get a jump start on just the guys that are starting green straight out of high school. So for the folks. That's great. Why don't you, because um, many young people um, don't understand that apprenticeship is one of the training ways to get into a really solid family supporting wage kind of occupation besides going to a four-year college. So help us understand what that is for anyone who's watching right now. So we do a four-year apprenticeship. That's what electricians have. You have to have 8,000 hours and four years of schooling. The program I went to is through GRCC, great program um, right here in Grand Rapids. And you kind of work your way up through. Um, some companies structure their pay based on where you're at in your apprenticeship. Ours is looked a little more independently than that. There are some people that catch on a lot quicker than others and some people that take on more responsibility than others. But you can, there's a lot of opportunities right now, especially at our company, um, and you can work your way up quickly to where as soon as you have that four years, you pass your test, you've got your journeyman's card, you're in your own truck, running your own work. Um, so, yeah, and it's been great for me. Uh, we have four kids, um, supported our family very well, make a very good living. So, yeah, and it's really important for young people to understand that when you graduate from high school and start that apprenticeship, like Bill said, it's four thousand or eight thousand hours. That's going to take about four years. Mm -hmm. that you're getting what kind of um, benefits are you getting during those four years? Bill? Oh, full benefits as soon as you go full time. Yes, and no burden of paying for any school. Um, the company pays for all the schooling that you go to, and you have to get a passing grade, which is pretty easy to get a passing grade. Um, and that's that school is one night a week that you go to. And basically it's geared towards helping you pass that journeyman's test. So you, you spend the first couple of years on some means and methods and tools and safety stuff. Um, but once you get into that third and fourth year, you're taking a lot of practice exams, looking at the code book, really diving into it and how to navigate it and all that and how to make those decisions and how to take that test. So that as soon as you're done with your hours, you're done with your schooling, you can go sit for that proctored exam. And, and it, I passed it the first time, it, it, it did well for me, so. That's fantastic. And I assume that some of the apprenticeship, like you said, they're preparing you for that. Why don't you um, let the young people know what a journeyman is? And why is that an important term? Okay. Yeah, no, it's a good point. So a journeyman electrician, um, that's, it, it's a license that we, that I hold. Um, so there's, there's apprentices. And then we kind of talk about first year apprentices, second year apprentices, third year, fourth year. And then as soon as you're done with your fourth year with your hours, you can sit and take a state test and you sit for your journeyman's test. That's about a 90 question test. It used to be in Lansing. Now you can take it online um, through at, a, at a proctored exam location and you pass that test um, and then you have your journeyman's card and that allows the company to let you work on your own. When you're an apprentice, you have to work underneath a journeyman and it's a, right now in Michigan, it's a two to one ratio. Each journeyman can only have two apprentices under them. So you're working there and they're your educators, really. The journeyman is the educator. Um, and yeah, for us, you know, that's really that's really all you need. You can then go on and take your master's. Um, I did not, and I or I did take it, but I didn't get it. Um, and then I never ended up going back to do it again. But and we do have some guys that that do that. Um, but really, the journeyman's is is the important. It's what everybody wants. Everyone's looking forward to when can I take that test? Because obviously, a bump in pay comes with that too. So, thank you for explaining that. Because I think again, I want young people to understand what an amazing training opportunity it is. Tell us about the wages, Bill, as you start as an apprentice and what's happening over those four years by the time you become a journeyman. Yeah, they're going up. Um, yeah, you know, ours ours go up 
almost quarterly um, here. And, and I, I don't know the exact numbers now, but I know a lot of the young guys have nicer pickups than I have, so. <laughs> yeah, um, young people, you're getting a raise every six months or quarterly, like he said. So while your your friends are in college, you know, potentially having college debt, you're you're just earning more and more wages without the college debt. And so again, I just, I love the apprenticeship model. And for some people it's to learn on the job with somebody teaching you is such a great way to learn. And Did there's a lot of, there, yeah. there's a lot of time for overtime too. Um, I worked a lot of Saturdays and stuff. We do shutdowns where we'll shut down Bissell, you know, up on the North end of town and do a big gear cleaning for them or install new gear. There, there's a lot of opportunities for, when your friends are, you know, working, making minimum wage somewhere, doing landscaping or whatever on the weekends, you can be, you can be going for it. So. So you mentioned the residential type of electrician versus the commercial and industrial. Um, why don't you address some of the myths about being an electrician? Mm. Um, because I think I always hear the same reaction when I say about being an electrician, and you you probably hear it too, like, oh, I don't want to get electrocuted. Oh, yeah. Is it, yeah. Is it one of those myths, Bill? Tell us what else. Oh, for sure. Be. Yep. And it's definitely a good barrier to entry. Um, it definitely spooks some people, which is okay with us electricians. But really, and, and it's the industry is, is getting better. Um, but there's a lot of safety standards in the electrical industry. And we don't do things energized. The only things that we do energize is checking and testing. If we have to verify, you obviously can't tell if something's not working if you can't test it. Um, but if, if we do have to do anything energized, we have great gear for that. We've got hoods, rubber gloves, all that good stuff. Um, it's it's our art flash PPE. So it's, yeah, that's definitely come a long way. Um, my dad and grandpa had some stories um, and you will hear some stories if you get into this industry. Um, but no, it's, that's definitely coming a long way. And it's you have to respect it. Um, you definitely got to know what you're doing. But yeah, through lockout, tag out and those safe work practices, it's it's a very safe industry to be in. So, yeah, I just wanted to let young people who are watching this, they don't let you touch live electricity to your train. So, no, no, that's where some of the myth is they're, they're yeah. not going to risk yeah. you getting hurt or killed either. That comes later on, you know, yeah, third, fourth year, not right away. Yeah, you, might be pull, you might be pulling some wire those first years, right? It's a lot of, in the commercial world, it's a lot of conduit running. Um, you, you end up, yeah, you have a lot in common with the pipe fitters that you're working with. A um, lot of hanging racks and putting conduit on them, a lot of building that infrastructure. Um, and in the residential world, it's a lot of cable pulling through, you know, wood studs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, yep. Yeah. So it's more, there, it's a lot of work at heights. Um, so that's one thing that we talk to with our new guys is you, you kind of got to have a, you know, having a healthy fear of heights is okay. You got to respect that too. But um, we work a lot in lifts and bucket trucks and things like that. So um, yeah, you can't be an electrician and be afraid of heights. So ladders, all that good stuff. Yeah. Is that something that you had been on ladders as a high school level student, like at KCTC? Did they get you on ladders? Or how would someone know if they have a fear? Like, does it, does it change once you get in the field and you're actually up in this cherry picker kind of thing? So, yeah, we did some um, at KCTC, but those, you know, that was pretty, all pretty low. We did, we built like some little sheds and wired them. Um, amusement parks is what I always think of when I think of heights. See, how do you do on roller coasters, you know, um, and, and all that good stuff. If you're walking across a bridge and you're looking down, you know, um, that, those are, those are good, uh, good ways to think about it. Yeah, I like to think about high school level too for young people of what they could be doing to prepare themselves. And one of the things um, when I think about being a skilled tradesperson, Bill, is the physical strength and maybe having, you know, your arms above your head a lot. What can students be doing if they think this is a career for them physically? Yeah, I mean, stay in shape, sports, um, active. I played hockey um, in high school and that really helped me keep in shape. I also had a job early on for a friend of my dad's as a landscaper um, that helped keep me in shape as well. But again, there's a lot, it is a physical industry. And I have some photos we can look at later where guys are, you're working hard. And I loved that. I, I miss, at times I miss dearly, you know, just getting out there and getting some stuff done. Um, but it, it is a physical trade for sure. Um, yeah, you just indicated that. Um, so you, one question, then I want to have you talk about your current job because your your career has been evolving. Um, 
I think I just lost it. <laughs> um, as an electrician, oh, I lost it. It's okay. So well, how did you get your first job right out of high school? Did that did it come because you're at KCTC doing that co-op? Did they hire you right in? Yeah, um, I, I think so. In my high school that I was going to, um, the our company was kind of actively talking to our counselors at the high school that I was going to, said they were looking for people. Um, so then they kind of took everyone who was going to KCTC. But there was a couple different opportunities. There was a company that came in to KCTC and did like mock interviews um, with a bunch of guys. And I would say 50% of the class went and worked for that company. Um, and some of them still work there today. And I, I know them, they're friends of mine. Um, and then I had applied to a couple other places. Um, but yeah, just getting, don't give up and get your name out there and talk to people, go on their websites. But people make it easy now to, to, to apply. Um, but also whatever job you can land, just work hard at it and build, build your good work ethic, show that you're dependable and build your reputation so that when you do apply for what, you know, for in my case as an electrician, you have a good resource and someone that's going to say, no, that it, yeah, Bill was good. He, he, he always was here on time when he said he was going to be, and he got done what he needed to get done. So. Yeah, I've heard that from many employers that they'll teach you the skills, but it's that work ethic um, showing up on time, like you said, being a good communicator, having be a person of character. Um, yeah, those are the people that we look at and and they, yeah, that's what we need for sure. Yeah. So how long um, did you do the traditional uh, commercial and industrial electrician before you kind of morphed your career? And tell us about that transition, why you decided to leave the field into this other role. I was voluntold. <laughs> no. So I um I have been with the company for 17 years. Um, started out of high school, like I said, and got worked all the way up through. Um, we were slow in 2008, 2010 when I passed my test. Um, so I didn't get a, a van right away. Um, we had a lot of foreman on jobs during that time, and that's when the Children's Hospital downtown was going and a couple other places. Um, but yeah, as soon as I could, I became a foreman, um, ran a couple smaller jobs. And then the most recent project I was on was Mercy Hospital in Muskegon. Um, that was a 12-story addition and then a renovation of the existing hospital while it was occupied. It was a very challenging job, um, the biggest thing I had ever been a part of, but it, and it went really well. It's one of my my favorite jobs. I love driving by that place. And that's one thing in construction, too. I, I, my wife gets sick of it and my kids do, but I drive by places and be like, ah, I remember when I worked there, you know, and I, I feel old, but it's it's cool. And seeing a project come from a hole in the ground to patients using it and all that. I mean, that's one thing about an electrician too, is you're there the longest because our stuff is in everything. It's inside the walls, it's in the floor, it's underground, it's above the ceiling. So you get to watch the entire construction process, whereas some of the other trades, if you're a painter, you don't come in until the drywall's done and, and then you leave. Um, so that's one thing I liked about being an electrician too. But yeah, so then I became a foreman at Mercy. Um, my role was site logistics and site safety. So people coming to our job, we had we had upwards of 60 guys on that job. So helping them get their training to get going, because you have to take an on-site orientation, all that stuff, drug screens. Um, and then getting them in the door, getting them out to the site, getting them their tools and all that stuff that they needed. And then safety was a big part of my job there as well, dealing with my OSHA. Um, we had, it was part of a partnership with my OSHA. So we had quarterly meetings with them. And that's what kind of got my feet wet. And our management kind of said, you know, Bill, you're kind of good at this. Um, you, you do okay with this. And then a, a, a safety director position became available. And I, and I accepted that about three years ago. So I've been doing that ever since. And I love it. I love helping our guys and our, our people in the field, our, our guys and gals in the field um, and, and still getting to see them and stuff. But like I said, I, I do miss, you know, getting in and, and just getting work done too sometimes. So. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear how um, you got to be part of these big projects. And like you said, pointing out to your family, which buildings you've been part of. And my dad, he's a pattern maker by trade and when we go through Port Huron, there's, he was on a road crew one summer. And every time we go down that road, he tells us, uh, you know, that, so it's fun. And I think for young people watching this, if that's something that you like the idea of, that tangible result of your work, um, that's why the trades can be such a great fit for you. Um, I love that. So safety is a big piece of it. Um, what would you like young people to know about the variety of other jobs that are on the site with you as electricians. Do you have pre-apprentices? Do you have the safety person? Help them understand what other kind of jobs make up 
uh, just even in your trade specifically, maybe other people that are on the site with you so they can understand the variety. Yeah, I mean, it starts with excavators and then concrete guys are in there right away, um, steel erectors, um, and then you've got interior framing contractors, um, carpenters, um, plumbers. We work right with plumbers and HVAC folks. Um, and then your your carpenters are also usually the ones who, who do the finishes. Um, and then painters and carpenters do the ceilings. Carpenters, another job where you can be on a project for a long time. Same thing with a plumber um, as well and, and kind of get to see that. And then we, there's, there's site leadership. Um, I have a lot of friends that like went to Ferris and now they're construction management um, and they're in charge of, you know, making sure that the project gets done on time and, and dealing with the owner um, and making sure that we're meeting expectations and if there's any hiccups with material, which we've had a lot of, um, kind of trying to get that stuff expedited and whatnot. Um, that's another great, great career um, that I've seen a lot of people involved with. And, and I would say, if you could, if you're going to pursue that career, try to get some practical work as a carpenter, work as a plumber, work as an electrician first, because they're that gives you a lot of value rather than just going to college and then jumping into that management career. Yeah, I think that's such a great um, piece of wisdom as far as going through that apprenticeship, getting the skills, working in it, and then do some of the companies in your trade pay for that college for the next level when someone wants a master's in construction management, for example? Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so that's going to save some money. And I think for young people to know that that's a potential career path, um, to let the company pay for it. Don't go straight to college and not have that practical experience, but apprenticeship, then get the master's. And in our company, a lot of my peers that started with me are now project managers. Um, so they they manage, they, they, they work mainly from the office here, um, but they are going out to sites and, and they manage the project from uh, start to finish, you know, from estimating it to getting the early material released and ordered and all that. Um, and working with the field team to make sure that, that things are going well, interacting with the customer and all that. So yeah, that's that's something where we really like people that have field experience in those roles because there's just a lot of valuable insight there, so. Uh, looking at high school students, Bill, um, do you allow students to come out for a job shadow? Yeah. How might they yep. get a little experience? Tell us about that. Yeah, we do job shadows periodically. Um, and it's it usually those, are, it's a larger group of students. Um, so coming in here, doing a kickoff, then going to one of our sites to kind of walk around and tour it and see what that's like. And then if we have time coming back here to bend some conduit and mess around um, and tour our facility and stuff and just get your hands on some stuff. So yeah, that's that's a great opportunity. I did that with another company in Grand Rapids um, through KCTC. Um, and that was that was good too, because it just kind of reaffirmed what, what I already knew. But yeah, it was a good experience. Yeah. One of the things that high schools and elementary schools, for that matter, are really trying to teach some of the soft skills, um, like teamwork, communication. Um, tell us about how some of those things play out in the workplace. Why is it important for them to learn that skill, those skills? Yeah, for me, I liked, I worked on a lot of our larger projects. Um, and I'm kind of a people person, which also helps in my current role. I love working on a team um, and working with other other folks to get a project done um, and being able to step back and look at that. But we, and we do have some folks that work alone. Um, so if that's your, if that's your jam, then we can, we can do that too. Um, but no, I, I think that anything you can, anytime you can learn just that good work ethic and what it feels like that sense of accomplishment, whether it's winning a soccer game or, you know, working as a landscaper, getting, wood chips in or something like that that anytime you can get that sense of accomplishment especially in a team setting i think that's really valuable um i guess i'd like to know what your favorite part of your work is bill and you can you can focus in on that electrician time or your current role but what has been some of your favorite parts of it and maybe the least favorite mm, my favorite parts would be the people and the equipment i like running equipment um driving you know Pedibones, forklifts, stuff like that, um, pulling big wire, running large conduit. Um, that's what I always enjoyed. Um, and I would say the the part I like, part I like least about it, um, I would say it's also the people. 
um, schedules can be tough. Um, you know, and, and that kind of comes later on when you're in maybe more of a leadership position, but it can be, it, it's tough to see another trade, you know, struggling and, and, and schedules can be tough. So that, that's, a, that's probably the biggest challenge. We have a couple of minutes left here, but I wanted young people to know, and you can reinforce this, how there's a lot of older white men specifically retiring out of the trades. Why should they really consider this as an opportunity for themselves, both, you know, women, young girls, people of color? Why is this such a great opportunity to be in the skilled trades nowadays? There's a lot of need um, for one. There's a lot of opportunities. And I think I'm an example of I never thought I'd be a safety director or, you know, have that type of a role. There's a lot of different avenues you can take it. Um, you can start working in the field, using your, you know, working with your hands. Um, and you can learn a lot about stuff. You can learn, I've learned, you know, I've done additions on my house and stuff like that. And I've learned how to, how to build things like that. Um, I just think that it's, there's, there's a lot of opportunities and especially right now, like you said, with the amount of folks that are getting out of it um, and all that. Yeah. And there's a lot of different types of jobs we can do. We have, we have folks, we have a gal that works in our prefab department. Um, and she does a lot of panel building um, and a lot of more kind of intricate, um, just she's really good with control stuff. She can do, she's, she can do stuff I could never even think of um, with PLC cabinets and all that. Yeah, there's a lot of lingo there that I don't even understand. But uh, yeah, there's, there's just many different opportunities in different ways. It's not just my experience and what I did. Um, yeah, hopefully that helps. <laughs> No, oh, no, it's great. We have about a minute left, so I'd, I'd like to have you share kind of a final word of wisdom to young people who are watching this or their school counselors about the skilled trades. What what do you really want them to kind of finish off here? Work hard um, and and keep your word and, and do, you know, show up on time and just one day at a time um, and enjoy it. Um, some of my best memories and best friends are coworkers. Um, and we've had a lot of a lot of fun over the years. Um, you may be working on a crummy job out of town in a in a you know a crummy situation, but it's the people that really make it awesome. Yeah, we've really enjoyed having you today, Bill, and learning about your career path and your trade. And uh, I'm hoping that some young people will be inspired to check it out. Um, thank you for being here today. Well, thank you. Yeah.